A while ago, I was dumpster diving through our old notes. After I got through the pages of Screams from the 4th edition campaign, ah! I made it to my first 5th edition game. It was actually kind of interesting flipping through the notes uh, through how we used to play the game, what we thought about it, and kind of comparing and contrasting the different styles. One of which was stats. We had all rolled for them. I had dropped my lowest, 12, into my intelligence, and I set about playing the entire game like I was inept. derp a derp I don't know how things work. And it wasn't until about six months later that the GM noticed the number of my sheep and he was like, wait a second. I eventually told the others about it, NBD, but uh, <laughs> I'm actually kind of a big brain having person. Our wizard Katya explained, yeah, uh, about that. I rolled for stats too. She proceeded to pick up a table and break it over her head. <laughs> I could probably multi-class into a barbarian, fine. And that was where I found out we have approximately similar strength. Randomized stats are weird. Some of the fights don't hold up as well if you know what the spells are. There was one time we were fighting Slenderman. It was a dark night. There was lightning and rain and a rolling fog and it was super creepy. Slenderman's finger extended out, pointing to our bard. Something materialized above his head. A twisted crown! He tried to dodge out of the way, but the crown latched onto his head. His eyes went blank. A dark aura emanated from him. Suddenly, his arms swung wildly out on their own. He was attacking us. The monster had used mind magic to claim the bard for his side. Katya tried to pull the crown off of his head, but it didn't work. Nothing we could do could wrest him free from his grasp. The twisted monster laughed maniacally, watching us fight amongst ourselves. Would it be forever? Would it be impossible to free our bard's mind from this monstrosity? Nowadays, if I had seen something like that, I'd go, Oh, <laughs> crown of madness? Really? First point, why the bard? The crown of madness says that it lets an opponent use someone else's reaction to make a basic melee attack on them. We've got a ranger, a rogue, a fighter. Any melee specialist would deal better damage. Since it's the bard, it's what? Rules is written one damage? Maybe they let him draw his dagger out beforehand. Not technically allowed, but that's still only a d4. Come on! Hasn't he ever heard of the action economy? This guy has all these tentacles coming out of him. He could probably make six attacks or something. And instead he's getting, what, four damage? Besides, the bard still gets to use their main action. And in general, a boss monster casting a spell which needs concentration, not the best idea. With no minions, we have to attack him anyway. And there's no way it's going to have a duration longer than an hour, since we're low levels. He's going to be using something which doesn't have a permanent effect, unless he decides to use one of those broken homebrew rules, which I guess will allow. <laughs> we even had an entire hostage situation where a sorcerer held someone at knife point for a really tense moment, which was slightly undercut by someone going, Wait a second, don't, don't daggers only do, like, two damage? Yes, yes they do. I'm aware of that. It kind of reminds me, one time I was running Call of Cthulhu session. One of the characters got stuck in a death trap, where they had walked into a grave, once they were in, the entire thing filled with dirt instantly. It was kind of nice running Call of Cthulhu for a change, since they were playing regular humans and investigators. One of the players went, I run to the shed, grab a bunch of shovels, and dig them out. I definitely know that if I had been running D&D, the players' minds would have gone to, Wait, is, is that a spell? I should be able to dispel magic as a trap to get him out? Does anyone have mold earth? We, sh we should be able to use that. Counter spell. It's, it's a spell, right? The, the trap, it's acting as a move earth spell, right? Counter spell! I don't necessarily think that there's anything wrong with that. It's just, you know, it's kind of refreshing for a change to play something different. It was a few months into the campaign that we actually had our first character death. Two players had joined up to the party. Zarek the Cleric and Bodhi Tree Shadow. Adopted brothers both raised by elven parents. We got ourselves into an intense fight. Eventually the group got hit with a cone of cold, and Bodhi died to the frost, turning into an ice sculpture. After the fight, we actually had to decompress. The players, not the characters. Picking up some food and talking about it. At first we were like, can we just retcon this? What do we do? And then as we talked more about it, the player realized, I didn't tell you guys this, but... In his backstory, Bodhi was a survivor who hid away while his friends died. I, I think that he wouldn't have wanted to live through that again, and is, is happy he got to die protecting his friends. There was an entire mini plot arc that spanned several sessions we had getting the body back to his family. 
The parents had let them go on this adventure, saying, They're a bit young. Don't you think it's going to be dangerous? Oh, it's going to be fine. They're going to out there to see the world. And then we come back a month later with their son in a body bag. We had a long session involving them, talking about politics between high elves and wood elves. Zarek talking about their memories. The bush they played hide-and-seek behind. The tree they had used for archery practice. Eventually, we buried the body and left to continue the adventure. I wish I could say it was a happy ending, but it wasn't. Another month later, tragedy struck again. In the final fight, the entire family fought to drive out the demonic invaders from their home. The father's wife died fighting to save the city, and his son, Zarek, got banished to another realm. Thinking his son was dead, and knowing that the mother was gone, as the last of his family, he slung her body over his shoulder, left, and that was the last we saw of him as he went into the woods and he lived out the last of his days in solitude. Hello, uh, after that uh, <coughs> somber note, I just have one more thing. One of my friends, uh, Jess, he runs a channel called Just Jackdaw. Uh, if you don't remember, I've been on his channel before, he's been on mine. Anyway, they're doing a Kickstarter. Uh, the book's called Heliana's Guide to Monster Hunting. It's got great art in it. Uh, the book covers new monsters, magic items, Harvesting rules, cooking, monster tamer class has got a lot of neat stuff in it. They're not sponsoring me, I just I want to show them some love because I'm really proud that they managed to put this together since I know they've been working on it for a really long time. They even have a free adventure up on the website for it. It's called Shadow of the Brood Mother, so if that sounds like your thing, you might want to go check it out. Uh, the Kickstarter is going to be ending June 30th. But they're not the only ones that are working on Kickstarter, because the WebDM are doing a thing of their own called Weird Wastelands. Set in a post-apocalyptic world where the gods have abandoned this realm and left people to their own devices, and the land is scarred by the warped magic of the past war, which kind of sounds like it's reminiscent of Dark Suns-ish setting, or kind of Deadlands Cthulhu-ish. And they're going to be finishing up their Kickstarter around kind of July 10th-ish, so... So you can hop on over there if that sounds like a thing you might like. Okay, that's uh, that's all of them. Anyway, goodbye! I don't know why I'm waving. You can't see me when I'm waving.